Hi, I'm Kelsey with Nyana Yoga, and today we're going to be focusing on releasing your stress. Uh, you want to have a few props with you today, uh, but you can be creative with this. I have four stacked bolsters, so two in each stack. You could use couch cushions or two firm pillows, so you're limited only by your imagination. Uh, I also have two blocks and a couple towels. And you can use a low chair, but I'm going to be using a small rattan um, book holder. So uh, let's get those props ready in advance. And what we're going to do is we'll start up high. We'll go all the way down to the ground where we're doing lots of restorative poses. If something is too difficult for you, you're just not feeling like doing that particular pose, skip ahead and move on to the next one. So this should be nice and relaxing. If you can't watch this video now, make sure to save it and you can do it another time. Uh, or you can do it when you're feeling a little bit stressed out. With that said, let's get started. All right, we're gonna go ahead and face the side of our mats for um, Uttanasana. Before we do that, we're gonna come into Tadasana, which is mountain pose. So you want to lift up, maybe have your feet about hip width apart, lift up all of your toes, and then press them in one at a time, starting with a big toe. You're spreading them, you're gonna press them into the mat, and then start to shift your weight from the heels into the balls of your feet. And then stand tall, you're gonna stretch your hands out so that you have palms facing in front of you. Inhale, reach up. You can interlace the fingers, press all the way up. You're going to have your pinkies rolling back, your thumbs pressed up toward the ceiling. You can maybe move from side to side. And then release the hands. We're going to do that one more time with the hands about shoulder width apart. Inhale. And exhale, we're going to fold all the way forward for Uttanasana. Shift forward so that the weight is in the balls of your feet. You can come up halfway, sliding your hands up your shins. And then exhale as you come forward. Let's go ahead and move into downward facing dog. You're going to lift the buttocks up toward the ceiling, reach the heels down towards the ground, widen the fingers, press into your mat, Press your torso back towards your thighs. Take in a deep breath and exhale. Let's go ahead and walk all the way up towards the hands again. We're coming back into Uttanasana. From here, you can start to, you're gonna press your hands into the mat. If you have blocks and you need a little bit more height, you can place your hands on those blocks. Um, but we're going to start to heel toe it out until you're in Prasarata Padottanasana. So I'm going to face this way so you can see. We're going to have our feet wide. You want the feet to be parallel to the outer edges of your mat. And then once you're here, press your hands into your mat to come forward. And again, shift your weight into the balls of your feet. If your head is touching the ground, you can narrow the stance. That way you can stretch a little bit deeper. Interlace the fingers behind the back and bring them down towards the ground. Let's go ahead and place the hands back on the ground in front of you. Heel toe it in. And rest in Uttanasana. Go ahead and grab the elbows and sway from side to side. I'm gonna show you from the side, you can stay where you're at. Place your hands on the ground, still your feet are hip width apart. And now step back for Auto Muko Savasana, which is downward facing dog. Deep inhale and exhale. Inhale. And let's exhale and come all the way down. We're gonna rest briefly in child's pose. This is Balasana. You can rock from side to side. Maybe move your forehead from side to side, massage it out. And 
now let's rise up onto our knees. Okay, so once you're on your knees, this is when we'll need our bolsters. So um, I had tied mine together with two straps, which you're more than welcome to do uh, for later on. If you don't have straps, again, get creative. You can use uh, belts. You just don't want the metal piece to be on top because that'll um, cut into your back. But for this pose, we're gonna go into Varasana, which is hero's pose. So I like to have the bolsters so that they're front to back. So you have enough space. And then you might want to have a rolled towel for your forehead and a rolled towel for your legs. So the idea, and I'll show you what Varasana looks like first. So you can do it with props or without. But what you want to do is have your knees together and then you're sitting in between the feet. So you have the heels on the outsides of the hips. For a lot of people, that's not accessible because it hurts, puts too much pressure on the knees. Um, and also sometimes the tops of the feet. So that's why we're using the props. So I'm just placing my knees on the bolster and then I'm taking this rolled towel and I'm going to place it between my buttocks and the calves because that gives you a little bit more height so you're not putting as much pressure on your legs. Then you can even have the feet a little bit off of the bolster and eventually you can start working it so that you have your feet completely off. Once you're here you can start to lean forward and place your forehead on that towel. We'll stay here for a moment. Nice deep breaths. Varasana means hero pose. After a while of sitting like this, you can maybe try it without the bolster. So we're sitting up nice and tall. You're rooted down through the sit bones, keeping your spine straight, lifting up through the crown of your head. You can close your eyes, deep inhale, and exhale. Maybe let your arms come down to the sides. Inhale. And exhale. And remember, you can always put a little bit of cushioning underneath your, the tops of your feet. Sometimes if you have bony feet especially, it puts too much pressure there. Next, we're going to rise up. And the way you do this, you can use your hands, rise up, put your feet together, and then come all the way up. Next, we're taking the bolster. We're going to place it behind us so that the end is rested on our hips. You can also take your towel and place it there in advance. And now this is called Supta Varasana, so that means supine hero pose. So we're doing the same thing. And remember, you can use that um, other bolster, your spare bolster, to sit on as you come back. But it does seem to take a little bit of pressure off when you come back anyway. So keep the knees together, the feet are on the outsides of the hips. You're resting your head or neck on that towel. Hands are by your sides. Maybe try to be palms up. And I have long arms, but if you'd like, you can take those blocks and place them right underneath your forearms. this is to release your stress so if you have any mental chatter let it go focus on the pose bring it back to your breath try to breathe in and out through the nose and also maintain that ujjayi breath so that means you're constricting the back of the throat ever so slightly making that breath noisier one more breath And 
to get out of this, you move the blocks out of the way. You're gonna prop yourself up on your elbows. Stay here for a moment, let the blood come back down. And then you can sit all the way up. And let's move the bolsters out of the way. Rise up onto your knees, bring your feet together. And now we're gonna do a wide-legged, um, not a forward fold, just a wide-legged stance. So this is called Upta Vista Konasana. Konasana is angle pose. Upta Vista is upright. So you're gonna place one hand in front of you, one hand behind, lift up and come forward. If you feel like you can go a little bit further and it's not putting any pressure behind the knees, you can do that again. So lift up and come forward. Let's bring our hands to our heart. And as with any of these poses, if you start to fall backwards a little bit, get some height. You can sit on your bolster, your pillow, or a block. Otherwise, close your eyes. Bring your hands up to prayer pose, namaskara. Take in a deep breath through the nose. Let it out through the mouth. And again, deep breath. And out. Now interlace your fingers. You're gonna press them away from you. Inhale, reach up towards the ceiling. And then exhale. Now to get out of this pose, you lean backwards, grab from behind the knees, bring your feet together. So now we're coming into, uh, we're gonna call it a bound angle pose. It's Baddha Konasana. And the reason why it's bound is because we're gonna use our strap or your belt Make it wide enough to slip over your torso. And make sure that that metal piece is not cutting into your thigh or your feet. Once you're here, you want to have the back of the strap on the tops of your hips and your lower back, and then you tighten it. That takes some pressure off because your, uh, the top of your, your pelvis is really wide. So if you start to cinch it in with that belt, then it takes pressure off the lower part of your hips and it takes pressure off of your lower back. So we're just gonna sit up right for a moment. You can close your eyes, deep breath, inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. We can also go into the Brahmari Pranayama if you'd like. Uh, this is called the humming bee or queen bee breath. What you do is you inhale and then as you exhale, you're humming and you don't try to change the tone of your hum. It's just whatever noise comes out reverberates through your throat. And then once you've got that down, you can also practice incorporating that humming breath on the inhale too. So we'll, we'll practice that. First, taking a deep breath through the nose and then hum. Inhale. And try to keep a one-to-one -one ratio with that. Then exhale, hum. This time as you inhale, you're gonna to try to hum on the way in and then on the way out. Uh, the way in, the inhale, is usually a higher pitch tone, and so they call it the worker bee breath, while the queen bee breath is the exhale. Just fun tidbit. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and inhale with the hum. And then exhale. The point of doing this breath is because it relaxes the mind, um, it reduces stress, it puts you in a meditative state. I love doing this right before bed. If you can do it for up to 30 minutes, I know that's a long time, but you'll get the best night of sleep you've ever had. It's a really good uh, type of pranayama or breath work to do. So now let's go ahead and loosen the strap. 
We can slip it over our heads. Okay, after you've slipped your strap off, you can put it to the side, and this is when you'll need to grab those stacked bolsters. We're gonna come into a forward fold, or Paschimottanasana. So have your stacked bolsters ready, and then also grab that low chair if you have one, or something that is about this height, or the height of your stacked pillows or bolsters. Because what we're doing is we're placing this right on our lap. This makes this pose a little bit more accessible. It's where you don't have to work too hard. This is all supposed to be restorative. We were trying to reduce our stress. So you're gonna be leaning forward over these bolsters. You can inhale, take your arms up toward the ceiling. Exhale, reach over, and then reach for that chair. If you like, you can take a rolled towel, place it right underneath your forehead. Inhale, exhale, reach. If any of these poses feel really nice to you, you can stay here a little bit longer. So you just pause the video and stay here for as long as you like before you move on to the next one. Another thing to remember is that if you are sinking backwards, grab one of your blocks, sit on that block, and then that gives you a little bit more height and gravity can do some of the work for you. I've even put people on chairs that propels you forward, makes it so that you don't have to work as hard. <laughs> them float down. Now we're moving into Janu Shirshasana, so that's with one bolster this time. And it's with one leg in the front. So what we do is we take the, you can take your left foot, bring it all the way up to your groin as far as um, up it, as it'll go. And then take that left knee that's bent out to the side. So you're opening your hip. This is almost like a small twist because we're twisting forward and then reaching. And this is when you'd use your bolster Reach over that bolster for your small chair. Take your hands out, shoulder width apart, all the way up. Exhale, float them down, and we'll go to the other side. Now the right foot's gonna come all the way up towards your groin. You're taking that bent right knee, taking it all the way out slightly wider than your hip, and then twist to face forward over that front extended leg. Place your bolster on top, hand shoulder width apart, and then inhale and exhale. Let's reach forward for that small chair. You also have your stack, your rolled uh, towel. Remember, you can use that.
then let's go ahead and bring the arms up. Inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, float your arms down. You can move the bolsters out of the way. Legs will come up front. We're in Dandasana or Staff Pose. Count one, two, hand spaces behind your hips. You're going to inhale and as you exhale, press up. Head comes back in line with the shoulders. If your hips start to sink, bring them back up. And then exhale, come down. Okay, now we're gonna be moving into Halasana, which is also known as Plow Pose. To get into this pose, you're gonna come through a shoulder stand and then rest your feet behind your head. I know that this, um, this pose can feel um, a little bit challenging if you don't practice yoga regularly. So in order to get into this and feel more comfortable with it, you can prop your feet up on your couch or a chair. Uh, make sure that that chair is on a mat if you decide to use that. Or even rest your toes on something like your stacked pillows. So I'm gonna get this ready in advance. And then I'll come forward. This is contraindicated if you're pregnant because um, doing any sort of inversion while you're pregnant can make your baby breach, unless your baby already is breached, in which case it's often a good thing to do inversions because you can flip them back over. Um, but also if you've had any spinal issues like a slipped disc or a herniated disc, skip these poses, any of the um, halasana or the shoulder stand, and then move right into the next thing. So I'm just tucking in my shirt because we're gonna come up. way down make sure that your bolster is ready for you if you're using that um, or your chair and is on the mat let's go ahead and inhale come up into your shoulder stand briefly and then start to bring your feet over towards your couch or your bolsters and this is halasana start to walk your hands a little bit further up towards your neck so that your back is a little bit more straight. This is a great pose because it nourishes the thyroid gland with blood, helps to regulate the thyroid, reduces stress and fatigue, provides oxygen to the brain. comfortable with this pose already you don't need to use the bolsters or your couch you can have your toes on the ground and then you can start to play around with it so maybe walk your feet all the way over to one side and then all the way over to the other side stand okay so initially you can have your hands on your back and keep walking it towards your neck to become more vertical but then in, uh, eventually you can even lower your forearms down with bound hands For some people like to keep the elbows on the ground the fingers pointed Keep reaching the toes up toward the sky. Keep your abdomen engaged. And then to come out of this, you can roll down vertebrae by vertebrae, supporting your back, untuck the shoulders, and come all the way down. We're gonna move into a bridge pose from here. So to get into this bridge pose, Satu Bandhu Sarvangasana, you're going to use 
uh, four of those couch cushions or your pillows or bolsters. Um, I like to strap them together just so you don't have as much movement. So I'm going to loop one strap on each end. And then you can tighten it, tuck it in, and do the same thing on the other side. Once you have that done, you keep the bolsters front to back, and you're going to rest your, the entire length of your body on these bolsters with the head coming off of it. So you can have your towels ready for you, for your head. So go ahead and sit on that first bolster. You're gonna rest your legs on that second bolster and then just have your head hanging off so you can adjust as you need to. Head and shoulders are gonna come off the bolster. You can use that pillow to roll underneath your neck or place it right underneath your head. And then place your hands, palm up along your sides. Remember you have those blocks, you can prop the forearms on the blocks stay here for a moment. It's a deep breath. Inhale through the nose. You can exhale through the nose or if it feels more comfortable, let it out through the mouth. If you're inhaling in and out through the nose, then try to maintain that ujjayi breath. In the West, we call it yogi's breath or ocean's breath. In Sanskrit, it means like upwards um, victory or conquest, and so they call it victorious breath. the elbows if that feels okay for you, you can place them over your head this widens the chest a little bit more another option is do, to do the cactus arms so your arms will be at a 90 degree angle almost like a goal post whichever position works best for you can stay there as long as you'd like. To get out of this, we're going to place one foot on each side. You can lift up, take that bolster out from underneath your torso, and then move it from your legs we're gonna go through one more pose before we come into Shavasana. And this is called uh, Viparita Karani, which is waterfall pose. You want two blocks. We're gonna come up slightly. And you do that by pressing into your feet. Rest your hips on those blocks. And then you have your feet straight up towards the ceiling. Some people like to take their strap and you can loop that around your calves and you can hold your feet to make it a little bit more relaxing. Keep your knees straight, not locked, but straight. Keep your feet flexed, reach them up toward the ceiling. You can rest your head on that uh, roll a towel or on the ground.
remember that ujjayi breath. And then slowly bring your legs down. Remove the blocks from underneath your hips. And we're gonna come into our Shavasana. But this is gonna be a nice relaxing Shavasana where we're propped up on our bolsters. If you're using two pillows or bolsters, then you can have the top one overlap the bottom one a little bit. That way you have a slope. You can have your legs extended, lean back over the bolster, Arms can be over your head, or you can do the cactus arm thing, or have them palms up at your sides. Allow your feet to come hip width apart. Toes will relax out to the sides. Release the tension in your calves. Soften the knees. Relax the thighs. Feel the weight in your hips become heavier. Feel the expansion of your chest. You have more room to breathe in this position. So breathe deeply. And then exhale. Let the natural rhythm of your breath take over. Soften the throat, loosen the jaw, release your facial tension. And you can pause here and relax in Shavasana for 15, 30 minutes, however long you need. And that's the end of our release your stress sequence. Thank you so much for joining. Namaste. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out the link below for the Yoga Plus app. See you next time. for 14 and 30 day programs, hour long classes, and much more on our yoga app, Yoga Plus by Psyche Truth. It's free to download and features a variety of wellness content, including yoga, fitness, Pilates, guided meditations, and interviews with dozens of wellness 